Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GEM, the ESM Relief. then we'll have a look at the UK Met Office pressure charts, we'll have a look at the GFS ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office precipitation and temperatures for the next five days. Now over the next few weeks we're going to be starting to see the potential for some very interesting weather um, as we are starting to see some proper cold runs crop up. The last few days in our videos we have been looking at the potential for something quite cold towards the second half of November and by day um, it is increasing in probability. We'll have a look at the ensembles at the end of the video now towards sort of the 20th to 25th of November. They are dipping below average, uh, a good few degrees below average. We have some very cold runs, including this GFS operational run, which would send us into the freezer for the second half of November. And I'll show you that in a minute. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. So we'll run through the latest GFS in a minute, but I do want to stress that this is one sort of output. It is one um, member of the GFS Ensembles. Yes, it's run at a high resolution, but um, it's not guaranteed to come off. It really only shows cold weather from around day eight, day nine, which is still in the unreliable time frame. Anything from around day seven on and sort of um, and less than that, we would start to say that's got a very high chance of coming off. And um, there's normally not too much disparity in terms of pressure patterns uh, around day seven or less. Um, so over the next couple of days, we will see this resolved and we will see whether the GFS wins out or some of the other models, which are not quite getting that high pressure up towards Greenland, bringing in these northerly winds. So if we do run through the GFS. You can see at the moment we do have weather fronts pushing in from the northwest, bringing heavier rain across northern Scotland. For south, though, under higher pressure, it is reasonably dry. Temperature is going to be around average at this stage. Maybe a few milder days here or there, but, but also um, there'll be some chillier days when we have some colder conditions. But it is pretty westerly over the next few days. As we're towards the weekend, we do see a build of high pressure. We do start to pull in some chilly, easterly winds. If we look at the upper airs, it's not massively cold, but coming in from a uh, from the, in the near continent, which isn't, of course, massively cold this time of year, but it is chilly. Uh, we have low dew points around, so we could see some cold overnight temperatures. Now, the uncertainty with what's been happening to the last half of November, or at least from around the 15th to 25th of November, is all to do with this high pressure. It's ridged up towards Scandinavia, and it's getting blocked out by this lobe of uh, tropospheric polar vortex um, towards Svalbard and sort of Russia. Now, what we see here is what all models get to, which is the high pressure sort of flattened across the UK. Um, in this sort of scenario, where we do have heights rising to our north, we will see this high pressure try to ridge northwards. Now, what happens on this latest GFS? We see it retrogresses, which moves against the, which means it moves against the zonal flow, which is generally from west to east. So instead, this high pressure is moving east to west, heading towards Greenland. And it reaches right up towards Greenland and we start to pull in proper northerly winds at day 10. A polar blast. Now, what the other models and ensembles will do, as you see in a minute, is they don't quite get this high pressure as far northwards. And they see the low towards northern Canada a bit more energetic, which flattens this off a little bit. and means more of a northwesterly wind, which is still cool. All of the models are still showing something a bit colder around day 10. But whether it's going to be this really quite cold Arctic blast is what's in with the uncertainty at this stage. Now, if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures, you can see some very cold air is flooding through. Now, it's not going to be beast from the east level by any means, simply because it is the end of November. So there's not that much cold air to our north. The beast of the east we got through the minus 15, minus 20 isotherm, which will firmly be staying over the North Pole this time of year. Um, we need to be waiting until January, February time to be seeing anything like that. But because it's end of November, we're heading towards um, the winter solstice with the sore amount of daylight, um, with very weak um, sun rays as well. It does mean when we do get these colder upper air temperatures, it, it does hold those temperatures down a bit more. Because sometimes in sort of March time, we can see freezing cold upper air temperatures, but towards the surface, we see snow melts, uh, we see temperatures get to around four or five degrees, and that's simply because the sun um, is a lot stronger. So we do have these sort of uh, balances at play. Now, beyond that, you can see we maintain behind the minus five isotherm, which is sort of the parameters we need for snow um, and for days where temperatures are 
very um a state very low or only getting just above freezing you can see most of the uk is actually a couple of degrees colder now around minus seven minus eight degrees 850 hpa and if we did zoom in to the united kingdom look you can see generally around minus eight minus seven 850 hp and the minus 10 line is just to our east now beyond that we stay in this locked in pattern and we see something very interesting come in from the north now you see the small area of milder air that is a small low pressure system and if that did come off we would be seeing widespread snow across many central areas a small trough um, now if that was just rain we would say it's a good six hours of heavy rain but because it will be snow we could be talking about 10 15 centimeters of snow with this sort of scenario i am speculating here of course as this is 300 hours out um we could be seeing something exceptional like that however beyond that the high pressure does start to topple towards day 10 but it maintains its strength to our north and we see low pressure build in within the colder air now at this stage it is mixing in with milder atlantic air and this is where we could get a sort of a messy breakdown um with sort of um snow to rain or some very marginal events but with the surface conditions staying well below minus five for a good sort of five six days at this point we would be firmly locked in the freezer towards the surface with temperatures hardly getting above freezing so if we did have a look at the if we do have a look at the GFS uh, precipitation and temperature, I do want to run through this very quickly just to give a bit of a tease of what this sort of mo uh, what sort of this run could do at this time of year. Now, do not take this literally. This is not a forecast. This is just what could potentially happen uh, from day ten to day fourteen, which everyone knows is the uncertain time frame. As we head towards two hundred forty hours, you can see a weather front to our north. And that's going to spread through and it's starting to turn to snow across northern Scotland and more widely across northern areas before turning to snow for most areas after a few days as that cold air starts to get down to the surface level. You can see it's not all snow simply because there is some milder air mixed in within it, but majority is snow. And we're seeing it pepper the north and the east coast and we're seeing that low pressure system move through as well, which he talked about. And that would be bring heavy snow for central areas. And just continuing with this peppering of snow showers and a heavy snow towards the north and the east before we see another weather front push in from the northwest, bringing milder air. Um, but again, could be another snow event. And if we do have a look at snow depth as well, you can see a lot of snow in the north, especially Scotland, but also in parts of England, Wales could be seeing snow as well. So just showing you all the potential for this sort of scenario. And if we do have a look at the temperatures, just a snapshot. For example, 23rd um, of November, widely 1 to 4 degrees, if not below freezing in a few spots. Um, if we go a few days back where the upper areas are a bit colder, widely 1 or 2, 3 degrees um, for the last third of November. So this is just what would happen if we did see one of these runs come off. Now, this is an extreme run, as I've said, very unlikely to come off like that for that longevity and that severity. Just giving hints of what we could be seeing as we head into the winter months. So we do have a look at the GM, see how that does compare. Now, I've already had a look, and it doesn't go quite extre as extreme. It's a midnight run last night, went very cold as well with a northerly blast. And if we do run through the midday run, you can see very similar over the next week or so. And then we see that high pressure flatten. However, you can see there's more low pressure towards Greenland and northern Canada. And as we try to see that high pressure builds up, you see it doesn't quite come off. The jet stream is trying to flatten it. We do see a marginal northerly wind come off with some cold air sinking into the north. Cold air very close to the UK, but not quite coming off simply because that high pressure hasn't reached far, further northwards. So these are the very fine balances um, that are at play between sending us into the freezer, like on that GFS run, or sending us a little bit colder, but generally westerly. Now, you can't rule out on this GEM run. If we did run it on another couple of days, these lows just to the north this high would shift eastwards, where we're seeing the big lobe of tropospheric polar vortex. So that's quite likely, and then we see high pressure building behind it. So it could just be delayed a couple of days than what the GFS was showing, but we can't speculate too much uh, beyond day 10, as, of course, it is very uncertain at this stage. But just showing you how it could evolve with a slightly different scenario. 
If you have a look at the Eastern EF, see how that does compare. You can see over the next few days, very similar, of course, low pressure. We see that Scandinavian high building. And you can see the high pressure actually stays towards Scandinavia. That high pressure sort of splits. And what we do see is easterly winds. Now, they're not massively cold easterly winds. going quite cold for southeast Europe, though, because there will always be a colder side of the high pressure. And as we head towards day 10, we see that high sort of move away and the jet stream starts to power up. We're seeing some ridging towards Greenland still. So, yeah, very interesting seeing what's happened with these um, models. Um, if we do go back to the midnight run on the ECMDF, you can see we are pulling in a very cold northerly wind um right towards the end of the run much much colder some colder air moving in if we did do the similar um for the gm as well if we had a look at the midnight run from the gm as we head right towards um 192 hours you can see we are going into a very cold northerly wind as well however only lasts a few days as that a ridge of high pressure does get flattened so just showing you all the scenarios that are in play um but it looks very very interesting as we head into the last third of november and if we have a look at the uk Met office run as well uh, only goes out to 168 hours so we can only see out that far it's probably the most reliable run but as i've said before there isn't that much data published in terms of pressure charts right out to 168 hours you can see that high pressure to our east you can see very strong high pressure out in the north atlantic trying to push northwards now Fortunately, we can't see um, further westwards, and it'd be very interesting to see what the situation of low pressure is towards uh, towards northern Canada and towards northern Greenland as well. Because if we did run this on another day or two, we could very much see this low shift eastwards towards Scandinavia and see this high head up towards Greenland and then plunge northerly winds. Or, similarly, if there is a lot of low pressure towards northern Canada and Greenland, this high never really makes it for, for much fun further northwards and we maintain westerly winds so we have to see how that does sort of play out over the next few days now if we have a look at the gfs ensembles you can see the uncertainty in play quite significantly toward the last third of november you can see generally at the moment temperatures are above average they're going to stay a couple of degrees above average but it's not going to feel particularly warm um uh, for many areas uh, with rain further northwards and chilly and northerly winds and easterly winds at times over the next sort of week or so as we head to around the 18th 19th of november you can see the cold run starting to appear, uh, appear you can see some ensembles really plunging a lot colder down to minus five or below and you can see there are a few runs that go similar to the gfs operational run it is an outlier of course but it is not by any means um, a massive outlier in terms of it's hugely um, out of proportion than what other ensembles are going for there's a good maybe third going for the conditions down to minus five or colder and you can see towards the last few days of the run we're a good degree or two below average which is trending a lot colder than we were seeing even yesterday and the day before where we we're still around average or a touch above average so we'll have to see how it does play out see precipitation is generally low so that gives the impression of um either two things high pressure to the south which we are seeing over the next week or high pressure over the top of us to the north of us so high pressure generally in play or it could symbolise a colder air mass, which is drier air mass, um, and will have less sort of frontal rain, which these ensembles generally do pick up at this sort of uh, long-range outlook. So, yeah, decent signal for something colder towards the last third of November. We can't really say anything more than that and speculate at this stage, as the amount of uncertainty there is in play. But we have been looking at this for some time. We have been looking at it in our winter look-aheads. We have been seeing this sort of model output the last couple of weeks really in the longer range so um we have seen a couple northerly winds come off over the last couple of weeks but never really had the cold air to our north so i wouldn't be surprised if we did get a cold northerly wind um over the next few weeks whether it's going to be the sustained brutally cold sort of freezer like conditions on that gfs operational run we can't say for certain i'd say it's unlikely but can't rule it out this stage it is a scenario if we have a look at Glasgow, you can see generally temperatures are a bit up and down over the next week or two, with more precipitation around, especially further, uh, especially because it's not further northwards. In the longer term, you can see temperatures are around or below average, similar to uh, London, with some very cold operational runs coming out. Uh, 
a very um, cold ensemble members with the operational run coming out, and there are some very mild ensemble members as well. So a lot of scatter around, but of course there are um, some very interesting runs that we need to keep an eye on, uh, and it is trending cold generally. Um, but we'll have to wait until it is fully resolved. Um, that will probably take uh, at least a day 10, will be another couple of days, and out towards sort of 22nd to 24th November, we won't have an exact idea for that, probably for at least another four or five days. So just got to keep our fingers crossed if you are looking forward to some colder weather, as there definitely is some potential for this last third of November. If we have a look at the UK Metal Surface Run, just have a look at the next five days. You can see precipitation in the north, um, quite heavy rain pushing into the north at the moment, but it will fizzle out as it heads south and eastward. Still some patchy rain potentially in the south and the east, um, moving through early hours of Wednesday. Can see showers in the north and generally quite cloudy in the south as well. More heavy rain pushing into the north as well. And we do see again. Another weather front heading to the north by Friday, it's trying to spread south. You can see, though, higher pressure is building in for the weekend. Um, a few showers dotted here or there, but generally things are pretty dry. A lot of cloud around initially, um, and, but I'd hope that it would start to break up as the high takes over. If you have a look at the max temperatures, you can see generally um, tomorrow temperatures are going to be around... 14, 15 degrees, potentially in the south, so pretty warm um, for this time of year. Uh, probably won't feel warm, but it is pretty decent. Uh, further north, it's a little bit colder than that. By Wednesday afternoon, we could be seeing temperatures potentially getting around 10, 11, 12 degrees, so a couple degrees colder, but of course that's because that weather front is pushing through. By Thursday, temperatures again around 11, 12 degrees in the south, maybe only 7, 8, 9 degrees in the north. And by Friday, temperatures back around 13, 14 in the south, 7 or 8 in the north. And as we head towards Saturday um, afternoon, you can see still temperatures around 12, 13, 14 degrees. But with high pressure around um, dry conditions, it may start to feel more like 13, 14 or even getting a little bit higher than that. So de things are definitely um, pretty mundane over the next week. There's going to be rain in the north, dry conditions in the south. And I think plenty of people would enjoy this sort of conditions where for many areas it is pretty dry. Um not particularly stormy at all that we could be seeing this time of year um, and we do have the potential in around 10 days time maybe a little bit less maybe a little bit more of seeing something a lot colder it is just the potential at this stage not guaranteed it's not a forecast it's turning cold uh, it's just the potential and the likelihood at this stage is slowly increasing day on day um, but we'll have to see really what happens so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon